this is our last lesson on bacteria and we are going to talk about economic importance and when you're talking about economic importance of any organism we are talking about the beneficial effects of the organism as well as the harmful effects of the organism on us so that is also to say that the good sides and the bad sides of the organism so that is economic importance don't be confused by the word importance in it yes it deals both with the good and the bad sides right so for the objective at the end of this lesson, the student would be able to state some economic importance of bacteria. So since economic importance deals with both the positives and the negatives, let's start by looking at the positives, then later we'll look at the negatives. So the first of them all that we are going to look at is that some bacteria are useful in brewing. And in brewing, we are talking about beer production, in the making of beer. Because of the anaerobic respiration that bacteria are able to undergo and that results in production of alcohol. And remember anaerobic respiration means respiration without oxygen. So when they undergo that respiration, they produce large amounts of alcohol. And let me also state this here that it is not only bacteria that are involved in um, this kind of process. Yeast are also used. Right. So, bacteria and yeast are used in brewing and in making beer. That is what I mean here. Secondly, we can talk about bacteria being used in cheese and yogurt production. And here, the same activity of bacteria can lead to um, thickening milk that is going to be used in something like yogurt. Because in making yogurt, there's like an ice cream. And so, it has to be heavier to make it nice, yes. And bacteria would contribute by um, causing some thickening in it and what we refer to as curdling the milk. Okay. So that is another importance that we find in bacteria, the positives I mean. Then we can talk about bacteria being involved in biogas production. Yes, also talking about the anaerobic activities of bacteria. And that also lead to production of methane as a gas and that is used in um, homes in some homes in cooking and for other purposes so that makes bacteria very important as far as biogas production is concerned next we'll talk about how bacteria are used in genetic engineering to fight diseases and the example that we'll be talking about here is using bacteria to make insulin for the treating of diabetes but for you to understand this point better, let me start by talking about diabetes. Diabetes is about having excess glucose in the blood. Glucose is sugar, so we say you have excess um, sugar in the blood. This hormone called insulin is produced by the pancreas as part of the digestive system. So when the pancreas produces the insulin, it enters the blood and, I mean, in the body. So the insulin makes the body pick up glucose with ease, right? So that is to say that the insulin makes... Um, glucose easily enter the body cells so that the body cells can use them to produce energy. So in a situation where either the insulin is not enough for one reason or the other or to simply say that there is too much glucose in the blood because insulin hasn't successfully helped the cells to take up the glucose. In that situation it leads to this disease called diabetes and diabetes has um, a lot of effects on the body because it affects the body in so many ways and that can even lead to death of course so what scientists have successfully done is that some bacteria because of the presence of plasmid in them the plasmid dna that i showed in the structure of bacteria so if you haven't watched that video please do so so that you'll be familiar with what i'm talking about the gene or that part of our dna that is responsible for producing insulin is picked and inserted into the um, plasmid DNA of bacteria. And when it's inserted in there, it makes the bacteria produce a lot of insulin. And the insulin is picked up and treated well and nicely packaged. And that is given to people that have problem with diabetes. Right. So in simple terms, we have managed to use the plasmid of bacteria to be able to produce insulin by inserting our gene for insulin production into them so that they will produce more insulin then we use that insulin to treat diabetes good 
Then we talk about the point number five, that bacteria are used as biological pest control. And here, what happens is that there are some bacteria that because of their activities, they are able to produce some toxins that are harmful to especially insects that cause harm to certain crop plants. And because the farmer would want the crops to be well maintained and to increase productivity, it is very important for us to control them. So using these bacteria that produce toxins for those insects that would try to harm the crops or the crop plants makes them very beneficial in this way. So bacteria being used as biological pest control. Now you can talk about more other importance of bacteria in terms of the positives. They are involved in the chemical manufacturing of ethanol, some organic acids, enzymes, and as well perfumes. And then they are also important in the carbon cycle and nitrogen cycle. And by these cycles we mean how carbon and nitrogen are um, cycled in our environment. So if you're talking about nitrogen cycle, for example, you have nitrogen from the atmosphere. Some bacteria would cause the nitrogen in the atmosphere to be fixed in the soil. That would be picked up by plants and used by plants to make their food. Some animals would feed on the plants and pick up nitrogen from them. The animals would at a time defecate. So their fecal matter enter the soil and some of them would be picked up by some bacteria and that is what we refer to as a denitrifying bacteria. They will send it back into the atmosphere. So in the atmosphere, they exist as nitrogen gas. Yes, and some of the nitrogen gas would be picked up by bacteria back into the soil. They enter plants and um, some plants are fed on by animals. So it will be that cycle. The animals defecate. It enters the soil. Some denitrifying bacteria would send those nitrogens back into the atmosphere so it causes nitrogen to be like in a cycle right so here bacteria play a role in it because uh, we have the nitrogen fixing bacteria we have the nitrifying bacteria we have the denitrifying bacteria they are all um, playing these important roles in the soil getting nitrogen to go back into the atmosphere picking it back from the atmosphere into the soil some bacteria are also used commercially to make certain vitamins so, for example, vitamin B and vitamin K. Then finally, we talk about how in agriculture they are used in making organic fertilizers. Let's talk about something like compost. Because bacteria have been found in large quantities in compost. So that means because of um, the asapotrophic nature, those um, species I mean, because of the asapotrophic nature, they contribute to um, decomposition. I mean, breaking down the materials of the compost and making the essential minerals in the to the plants readily available. So after talking about the economic importance in the positives, let's move to the negatives. For the negatives, the first we'll talk about is that they cause food spoilage. So they can spoil fish, meat, vegetables and fruits. And this is because of their sapotrophic nature. And some bacteria are pathogens and thus cause diseases. And these are caused by the parasitic bacteria. And remember, I mentioned some of the diseases that are caused by them. Finally, we can talk about tooth decay, which is also caused by bacteria. So here we have mentioned three negatives as compared to the nine points that we stated under the positives. So that shows clearly that bacteria have a lot of positive impacts on humans. Although I know that a lot of students picture bacteria as some very harmful organisms, but note that it is not all bacteria that are harmful to us. Most of them are so beneficial to us. Okay, so that is what we have for our lesson today. We have looked at economic importance of bacteria. Let's see these few questions. You have to state two beneficial effects of bacteria on humans. And you are well state two harmful effects of bacteria on humans. So this brings us to the end of prokaryotes. So next we are going to look at eukaryotes and they are the most advanced form of cells. Okay, so join us as we start with eukaryotes. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you always be updated on our new videos.